Hello everyone and welcome back to another week here on Eat Sleep Brief. And this week you may notice we do not have the lights on for this week, um, at least for the first part of the episode. Uh, so what I'm doing is giving you guys uh, an update, more importantly an update on the Coraline algae. I don't know if you guys remember, I put up a video about two months ago seeding this tank with Coraline algae. And I highly recommend you guys checking out that video. I don't want to bore you guys and repeat kind of the same information. but essentially what i did in a nutshell i went to my neighbor that had tons of coralline um, on his back glass uh, he scraped off a big chunk i crushed it i uh, blended it pretty well not blended it but i made sure it was crushed to really 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 fine uh, particles essentially a dust particle and i was able to uh, put it in the tank with obviously all the flow turning over and everything and um, what I was able to do was essentially seed the tank with coralline algae. Now there's a few products out there that essentially are sold and kind of doing the same thing. I even know of, of stores that'll sell you um, ground up coralline algae. So personally, I feel that's the best way to seed your tank. It's very natural. Um, I have seen some companies that have certain additives. I'd rather do it this way because again, it is a lot more natural and kind of you're doing it the same way it's being done in the ocean so I did that two months ago um, was when that was done I haven't given you guys an update but if I be totally honest with you I started seeing coralline growth as of probably a month maybe a month and a week within a month I was already noticing uh, growth now it's really everywhere I mean and the main reason I have the lights off because when they come on it's very difficult for you to see but I don't know if you can see all that is coralline, I mean, coralline, 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 um, coralline, coralline all right there, coralline all right there, tons of it, you know, even coming up here. So this tank, is, as you're seeing, it's a good sign. Generally speaking, when you see coralline is a lot of times when people recommend you to start adding corals of the tank more importantly stick pieces you can see i have quite a bit of sticks in there because coralline is one of those algaes that'll grow when the parameters are really stable in your reef tank so they're a good way of showing you that your tank is very stable i have a lot of people messaging me especially when i made that first video on seeding your tank with coralline saying they can't get it to grow um you know what i recommend and really guys, the easiest way, and I know it's not the answer you wanna hear, uh, but it's stability. Using a good salt, having stable parameters, not having your parameters fluctuate uh, is very important. You know, Generally speaking, coral or algae in general isn't something we don't want in our reef tanks, but when it comes to coralline, you'll end up getting your reef tank, whether through your cleanup crew, uh, through a frag, I mean, somewhere it'll end up getting introduced and yeah, it's one of those core lines. Some people don't like it. Personally, I love the pinkish purplish look. And yeah, that's a way I recommend. But I'm very happy to report, as you can see, within a month, um, I would say, you know, again, maintaining good parameters. My specific tank here was able to work. So it's a very cheap and ineffective way of seeding your reef tank. And I can honestly tell you it does work. So I've briefly spoken here about the Coraline, not the Coraline, shoot, let's stop talking about that. I've spoken to you guys about the uh, Kato algae, and that is here, the microalgae. So this is an algae that generally reefers will try to grow in the reef tanks. It's one that heavily promotes uh, exports of nutrients, both phosphate and nitrate, as well as replenishes uh, fatty amino acids in the tank. So it's, actually, you know what, let me, I need to adjust my skimmer, I just remembered this. Um, another tip I want to give you guys, this is actually, couldn't have been any better timing. You don't know how many people I see, and I'm actually going to have to make a video on this in the future. BRS did a great job of covering how to properly tune your skimmer. Uh, but I see so many people where the bubble, the main bubble breakage on the fine bubbles, where it transfers from fine to big, happens right here on the neck. Guys, um, Although a lot of skimmers, I mean, most all skimmers will skim like this. That I would not recommend is the right way to tune your skimmer. What I would recommend is the break point between the fine bubbles and these bigger bubbles to happen right at the base of the cup. So in my particular skimmer, 
close it up and you'll start to see it increase. And on, on my skimmer, it's uh, it takes fine adjustment. You can already see the bubbles coming up, you see that? So generally the transfer from the fine bubbles to the big bubbles, you don't want it to happen here. Um, another great adjustment, but again, I might have to do a whole video on it, is try to always adjust your skimmer with an air, uh, or sorry, through the air. I know a lot of people out there will say, well, my skimmer doesn't have an adjustment for the air. You can actually get a, a, a needle valve or you can get a, um, uh, it's like a clamp that in essence would, would, would crush the, not crush the hose, but would close the air hose off so you're able to dial down the air on your skimmer. But again, I'm going to do a whole video on that in the future because I think it's very necessary. Um, and again, BRS did a great job on touching on that. But getting back to the macroalgae, so the Kato here has been doing an amazing job. Ever since I started uh, dosing uh, Triton method, both uh, 1, 2, 3, A and 3, B, you can see them here. This thing, guys, has, I mean, it's its ridiculous the size that this thing has, has gotten. I don't know if you guys go back and watch watch the video. I mean, look at that, guys. That's, uh, that's a solid, solid mass of, uh, of Kato. But, um, I actually need to adjust the valve here. Let me close this off a little bit. Anyways, there we go. Well, you can see a lot of micro bubbles. That's because I didn't have my uh, my gate valve adjusted correctly. You can see them all coming out of there, but it'll it'll die down right now. See, let's dial the skimmer in. There we go. But yeah, ever since I started dosing the Triton method, guys, this stuff has tremendously grown a lot in size and all that has to do with the Triton method. It's, it's specifically targeted to nourish uh, your macroalgae and as you can see it's been doing a really good job. I don't know if it's just me but it's really cool. I have a few snails in here. There's uh, one right there and one somewhere in there. Um, I like to keep snails in here again just to keep the algae off the walls so it's not out competing the main algae that you are trying to grow. But it's really cool to see them here earlier in the week. You can see how they're cleaning uh, the macroalgae. They're climbing on top of it. I mean, it's a big ball of mass. Um, and it's crazy to see how, how much weight this thing is going to hopefully start carrying here in the near future. There's just so much mass to it, as you can see. So it's no secret if you have been following the last few videos I've been doing, uh, you probably saw me complaining about my SPS sticks just really browning out, losing a lot of color. Uh, not bleaching but just losing color and there's a lot of people that were commenting on different inputs on what it could be one is it's a new tank and yeah my kind of argument to that was i feel i waited long enough to put sticks in here i mean god there's coralline growing in here that alone should tell me i got pretty stable uh, parameters so i thought they were ready um them not bleaching is is kind of letting me know that the light isn't too strong uh, so I've, I've tried to increase the flow a little bit. More importantly, I think what um, I narrowed it down to is just a lot of nutrient export. Obviously, there's only one fish in there. Um, it's not like before I had about six, seven, and all the poop was, you know, in essence, essentially feeding the coral. So my plan of attack for that was, and what I have been doing, is dosing continuum products. So both aminos, ocean snow, and coral exponential. I've been dosing these on a daily basis um, and I think I've been seeing good results. I've actually seen, uh, started seeing a little bit more uh, polyp extension. I mean, very, very little. You know, I'm not going to tell you guys it's a, a lot, but I've been starting to notice a few results going in the right direction. And one tip I have for you all I'm sure a lot of us have containers like this. It doesn't matter what you're dosing, but sometimes it's very difficult to count the drops on here or pour it onto. Um, the cap it just makes it very difficult it makes a huge mess so what I went ahead and did and what I highly recommend you guys doing especially if you're dosing aminos like this or any coral food is go over to Amazon and I'm gonna have a link in the description and order yourself these UV resistant uh, glass uh, droppers eye droppers I guess you can call them um, obviously they come empty they're brand new they don't come with liquid but what you're able to do guys it's so much easier to do your doses with these guys um, I know for a fact three pump, three full pumps of this equals uh, two uh, two milliliters, uh, so you can kind of do the math there. And this one already came in one of them, so obviously I didn't have to change that one. But for any of you guys that are dosing 
aminos, you know, any coral food of that sort that you have to, you know, kind of pour the bottle and it gets sometimes difficult or uh, hard to figure out how much is going in. Really, really highly urge you guys to transfer them to this. Obviously, all you got to do is uh, label them. I mean, you could even use a Sharpie if you wanted to. Uh, and it just makes it a lot easier. So I think it's going to be a great tip for you guys out there that are dosing. But yeah, I am happy to say that at the very least, this stuff uh, seems to be working. It seems to be doing its job. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, a lot of us can agree that, that the issues, I believe, are just there's not enough free-floating matter in the tank as far as nutrients. Uh, coral food. So I've been feeding a little bit heavier, not only with frozen food, but also this coral food and amino acids to hopefully get them to bounce back. But like I said, they're they're holding on. It's not like they're getting worse and worse as time goes on. They just kind of browned out, and that's about it. It's really cool to see the zoas. The zoas guys are just multiplying like crazy now. Um, but yeah, it's very very nice to see that. So a lot of people also ask me, and one thing I want to cover. Um, asked me in this new tank how I've been doing to to kind of manage the algae um, how come you know the rocks still look in really good condition the sand still looks pretty good and what I've been doing so I still do uh, water changes not as often even though I started the Triton method the only reason I'm doing the water changes right now are to essentially just uh, siphon the sand bed uh, maybe take a, a little bit of algae off the rocks if there is any I mean I have a small little area there um, but nothing too crazy and that just really helps the tank to again stay on track manage and export the nutrients i mean it's doing a great job so in essence all i'm really doing is just cleaning the sand bed um i know a lot of people don't like to stir up sand beds i personally am a, a person that love to stir them up i just feel if you don't stir them up tons of bad stuff can grow under there and if you ever do happen to move the tank or accidentally stir it uh, you'll get some you know crazy gases coming out of that stuff um tons of, of detritus tons of you know essentially stuff that isn't good for the tank so i highly recommend especially of your newer tank uh, to surely siphon your sand beds and the recommendation i make for water changes guys five percent i really don't think enough i mean even in some cases ten uh, percent i don't believe is enough um i think a 15 to 20 percent is where you really start making changes in the tank and where it will really start rewarding you. Um, I see a lot of people recommend 5%, and guys, if you dilute something by 5%, I believe you're not doing much. Uh, so I'm a big believer of, you know, no more than about maybe 30%, but then again, that's a lot of water just to mix. Um, but yeah, these tanks in a lot of scenarios can handle, you know, up to 50% water chain. I've done them plenty of times, not myself, but recommended people doing them. Um, but yeah, I think generally speaking, if you are doing water changes, 20% is a good place to be, 15%, because again, a 5 even 10% dilution um, isn't very much when you're trying to dilute nutrients or replenish stuff um, in the water. I think the main reason we all do the water changes, more importantly, it's to dilute the nutrients, because um, a lot of us do dose, so it's not really like we're using it to maintain our parameters, so that's kind of my take on it. Look at that little bubble. But um, yeah, guys, I'm going to obviously keep you guys updated on the SPS sticks. The goal now is to not add any more coral till we start getting the polyp extension back um, on the acros on the top. I'm very happy with the growth on the, the I mean, the Ghani is doing great. The mushrooms are doing great. The torch is doing great. The zoas are doing great. So everything else is doing good. Sticks are always a little bit more difficult. And yeah, you know, a lot of people can blame new tank syndrome. I think to blame is a nutrient export is really good in the system because um, again i have been feeding very heavy even though you don't see fish other than that one guy in the back this tank does get fed very very heavy so that's going to be it guys i just wanted to fill you in on this update to kind of keep you on track to see what's going on uh, to kind of get an idea of what i am using such as these uh, products here as well as the aminos and just kind of take you along the journey you know i know a lot of people would love to share only the good times. I think sharing the struggles is not only going to benefit myself, but hopefully one of you out there or many of you will learn from this video. So we're going to end the video here. I thank you guys very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.